It's Matthew Larkin here with Teresa Wayman of uh, Warpaint. Warpaint dropped their first full-length album on the 25th of October this Monday. They're playing Dublin tonight at Craw Daddies and they're about to embark on their UK tour. So, how are you doing this evening? Very good, very well. Is this the first time you've ever been to Ireland? Yes, first time any of us have ever been to Ireland. I think we, we're, all, we're all falling in love. Slowly, yeah. With Ireland. <laughs> so, um... Not slowly. Hmm? So, what do you think of it so far? What have been really the most standout things? Well, you've seen? it's got a nice peaceful atmosphere, which is... I didn't really expect that. And um, the people are all really nice. Mm. So like not really, there's not the same pretension that you see sometimes in London, even though I love London yeah. and England and stuff, but... Um, it feels a bit in Dublin. It feels a bit like London. Like you were saying, I noticed that yeah. as well. Um, but without that, it's, it's not as hyperactive, and it's not as um, the people are much kinder, softer. And uh, we've had some interviews here, and it's been like not the standard sort of. I don't know. People just seem like a little bit more interested in things rather than asking us. Um, the same questions. Really? Yeah. That's good. Not no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're days away from your release of the Foo, the first LP. Mm-hmm. How's the journey been so far since the release of Exquisite Corpse in 2008? Well, it's been like a it's been a pretty um, steady up and up and up um, as far as like. I guess the timeline goes. The last year, things have really changed a lot. We've been, we signed with Rough Trade um, about a year ago, and um, then did our first tour ever, really, around the United States uh, in our last October. And then since then, we've recorded an album, and we're about to release it. And done. Uh, been over here, not to Ireland, but to the UK and Europe, like twice and done like three large tours and a bunch of little ones and I just or maybe more than that four or something I don't know it's um, it just all makes sense I guess we've been a band for so long that I feel comfortable with what what's happening and the traje- trajectory that we're on it's the same sound cliche like a dream does it yes definitely it definitely does I um you know, this is what we wanted and what what we were aiming for a long time ago, but also nothing we pushed unnaturally for either. Yeah. Like I mean, we've people are astounded that we've actually been together since 2004, off and yeah. on. We definitely took a break, but that we took that long kind of baffles people. And to me, it only makes all of this make that much more sense, and I feel that much more comfortable with it because I feel like. We weren't ever trying to be too hasty or push into something that isn't deserved. So the fact that it's happening now, it's like, okay, well, um, makes sense. You know, it doesn't not make sense. And it all began with that Valentine's Day where you guys got together and just jammed. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and, um, I don't know why we were all hanging out on Valentine's Day, but I think only one of us had a boyfriend at the time, so... Oh, yeah, so... So we were like... Story. <laughs> like, oh, well, let's hang out together and cry. Just kidding. <laughs> no, we made music. So, so what's uh, the story now? Are you guys do these tough side projects right now? No. So it's all just focused on yeah. working? Yeah. I mean, Stella kind of plays for this guy she's always played with off and on. Um, she, just if, if we're home, she'll do a show with him. His right. name is... Um, uh, oh, why did I just forget his name? Andy Clockwise. Andy Clockwise? It's cool. It's awesome. So, Exquisite Corpse. Mm-hmm. It was really well received. Mm-hmm. It was, uh, it's an amazing EP. Thank I you. Say myself. Um, was there ever any pressure to live up to high expectations that were put upon us? No, because the expectations weren't like, you know, I don't know. No, I didn't feel that way at all. There's no expectations? No, I mean, I, I only felt like, oh yeah, I'm excited to do better than that. 
you know? Because yeah. that was the first thing we ever did, and it's like, you learn so much, and you grow, so we've grown so much since we recorded that EP. That EP happened, when that was recorded, we had only played a live show probably five times. Yeah. In the, 2000, since 2004. Like, five or seven times, and like, nothing. Yeah. Right when that was done, we started playing live around LA, um, we averaged about a show a week for that entire year following, and we changed a lot when once you know because we started actually playing live. Yeah. So I just felt like it it only made sense to do something else, and it never seemed like it was even the kind of thing where you compare and you go, oh now what? You know, like I can imagine that maybe. If it was like we just had released OK Computer or something, and it was like a phenomenal record, mid mid lifespan, yeah. like then how are we gonna follow that up, you know? But I don't, I don't feel that way. It didn't uh, dwell on any of these at all when you were No, before? no. The, this is like a completely separate thing. That was so long ago, and we have a different drummer, and yeah. I don't know. It just seems like we were just really excited to just be able to get these songs out and a lot of these songs could have been on the exquisite corpse because some of them well not a lot but some of them were were sort of were written before exquisite corpse was but they they, i mean they definitely have new life now because we flushed them out differently now but yes a lot of them started ages ago you talked about uh, stella your drummer how important is it for you for emily and jenny to find the drummer to uh, i mean how could you... It's the core of the band. It's yeah, I mean, like... You guys work around that beat, don't you? Well, I mean, we all work around each other. We don't just work around her beat or something, but... Yeah. Um, uh, it's, like, beyond important. It's massively important to have all the members, all the important members that we have. I already felt like I had my dream other two members... You know, um, and to have a fourth that completes the circle when, or the puzzle when we've yeah. been like really dying for that and wondering if it would ever come, that's like it's phenomenal. Would it be compared to almost like a relationship, find that one aspect of. Yeah, the whole thing is a massive relationship. It's like being married four people plus the music five and then you have your family and whatever like, yeah. boyfriend you have and then I don't know it's I have like so many relationships I feel I have to consider that I'm just like wow I don't even I don't even want to have a boyfriend <laughs> um, what's the writing process like for you guys now music and lyrically and um, is it different than what it was maybe no. before Exquisite Corpse? No, it's the same. The, uh, the lyrics and the melodies are mostly whoever is singing it is the one who's like pretty much written it, the, mel- the melody or the uh, the lyrics. We all we come to songs in a lot of different ways. Like someone might bring a song that started or completed start to finish just on guitar or or bass and then everyone adds their parts and we all kind of we can give each other suggestions and stuff but we don't we don't really meddle in I don't meddle in like other people's affairs really and I let Jen kind of come up with her her own ideas and it's that's the cool thing about all of us is that we generally like what's going on with what the other is doing but we definitely like piece songs together mutually we go okay how should we get from point A to point B we could either do go this way this way or this way try all three we usually come to a consensus on which one's better and we're like you know sometimes it takes a little while to come to a consensus but not usually um, what are the direct influences that mold the war paint sound for you just feel feel and uh, moods and yeah. I mean there's not like I never really get an idea from like 
I mean, I do sometimes, but not really, like, get ideas from other music and go, I want to write a song like that. Yeah. Like, we listen to all kinds of music, and we just... If we're jamming out, like, we were just we just did this thing on TV, or for... I forget what it's called. A TV show with um, Elton. Here and Aaron? Yeah, it's like... What's that TV show called? I don't know. Oh, when, oh, when... With, when... Under Ether or something like that. Under Ether. It's a TV show, music late night music TV show. I, d- I don't know. We don't get Irish program on In Northern Ireland? Yeah, uh, Why? I think we do, but I mean, I, I usually don't watch TV mm-hmm. at all. I don't watch TV, so. Yeah, I don't either. But anyways, <laughs> um, uh, la, 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 la. oh yeah, we were just like Jen's playing a bass line, and I just started a new bass line that I'd never heard. Where she just yeah. played something, and I started playing to it. And I liked what was going on, but there's like that could become a song, yeah. and it's not like like just came from a moment, and I was just like hearing something and just playing whatever I wanted to play. It's not like I go, ooh yeah, that bass line is perfect for me to play like a Jimmy Page type yeah. riff. You know what I mean? It's like it just doesn't happen like that. And then um, in past interviews and the. You've talked about having your how important it is um, having your EPs and maybe your LPs, having a, a really live sound, maybe not so studio. Yeah. <clears throat> maybe not, maybe not going lo-fi, but what's uh, how important is it, is it to you guys to have that there sound be so raw for the listener? Uh, well, it's pretty important. Maybe to take a make a pun on the new album name, but. To not, to not fool them of what they might sound like, you know, if if you listen to some studio, really high end studio music, it's it's not going to sound the same live unless it's a, a lip sync. So yeah, well, um, yeah, I don't know. Like I've never, I don't know. It's hard. I mean, I definitely like music that's. Sometimes sounds recorded in a studio. Yeah, that. But I also, I also enjoy music that sounds like produced sometimes. But a lot of times, no. Yeah. Um. It's really important that it, the recording process, like the way we play it, it embodies like some sort of like live feel. Yeah. And. We didn't even get to do that as much as we wanted on The Fool because we had only just met Stella like three weeks before really? uh, we recorded. And so we it, it ended up needing to be that um, Stella and Jen bass really lock down yeah. together and figure out the parts because, figure out Stella's parts because that's not very much time to write an album. I'm like, oh, Stella just jumped right in, you know? Yeah. So, um, it was like, we needed to go, therefore we needed to go track by track, kind of. They played and recorded live together, yeah. but, I mean, we did one song live, which was War Paint, the song War Paint. Yeah. But other than that, we had, um, I don't know, I think the next album we definitely, like, I, I am a fan of presenting the music the way that it is played live. I I don't... There's a different art to this, and this is, like, a totally valid thing as well, like, going into a studio and doing a lot of overdubs and, like, oh, getting yeah. all crazy, and I think that could be probably fun. But I just, for the most part, like, I want to use the pedals that I use and the amp that I use and, like, make it sound the way it sounds live and just do that. I mean, it's doesn't it's, it just seems like the most natural way I guess but it's good um, really cool thing about Warpaint is you guys don't have a definitive uh, vocalist you guys all share the vocals um, we don't all share the vocals oh, me Stella. and Emily sing most of the stuff and Jen does a, a little uh, bit I mean there's a lot of harmonies on this album um, but they're only there's live, like Jen probably sings one one song or twice, like sings a little bit of a backing. So maybe you and Emily then? Yeah. I mean 
I don't, I think that could change. And I, I would like that to, I, I'm totally open to that changing. But as of right now, that's like sort of an inaccurate statement. Oh, yeah. But we but, uh, like to sing together and make harmonies. And like, there's like a couple songs where Jen sings, but it's not her singing anything on her own. And it's, it's like to fill out, you know? Yeah. The space. And um, what are your plans for 2011? Where can people expect to see Warpaint? You know, festivals or any... We'll probably do a lot of the, like, European and, and uh, UK festivals, like that whole circuit yeah. in the summer, all the way to September. And we're going to Australia at the end of January. Yeah, to do Laneway, isn't it? Yeah, to do Laneway. Um, I've actually got a friend over in Australia, and it's a big uh, question to ask, but would you be able to do a sideways show? That's not a festival, maybe? Yeah, we are. We are going to be doing that. Really? Yeah, I don't know where yet, I'll have to talk yeah. about it. So, she couldn't afford the festival tickets, so, but she'd love to see you live. Cool. So, a side show. Yeah, we are doing side show. That's great, so. Um, yeah, and we're going to tour the United States again in the... Um, oh, thanks. The United States again. So, you've been very busy now? Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, over on Halloween night, you'll be in Belgium. Have you guys all brought costumes, at least? No, I, costumes? Got, I bought some face makeup. And what are you going to dress up as? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know yet. I'm going to try to figure it out. I definitely, like, I definitely want to paint my face white. And uh, maybe I'll just be a ghost. You guys should trick or treat. Yeah. <laughs> in Belgium, you know? Yeah, we should. Except I don't really eat candy, so then what do I do? Save it for myself. Go to the places that give you nuts and peanuts and stuff like that. What you know? places are those? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a big problem over here. We usually egg, you know, throw eggs at the houses that would um, give us peanuts and wouldn't give us sweets. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'd like to do that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, so you you will celebrate Halloween then as a band, yeah? Yeah. That's good. Cool. I kind of wish we were playing a show. We played a show in um, Lubbock, Texas. I think it was Lubbock last Halloween, yeah. and it was really fun. Did everybody really dress eerie. up? Was it on Halloween day? It was it? on Halloween night. I don't. People didn't really dress up though, which is odd. Uh, it's no fun. There were a couple people dressed up, but it wasn't like him or anything. Um, I have to go sound check very soon. Go so uh, I'll just ask you one more question. What have, what's been the record or records that have uh, kept your attention the most in 2011? Or sorry, 2010. 2010. Um, well, there's a record called by Conan Moccasin. Yeah. And I love that album a lot. There's a new PBT record. Um, and um, the Ariel Pink record's really good as well. What's that right? You mean like records that were released in, in 2010? 2010, yeah. Yeah. That's great. So uh, thanks very much, Trace, for the interview. Thank you. Actually, you um, upheld the standard of good interviews. I'm glad, I'm glad of it. <laughs> okay. So.